by the end of this retelling, one of the party will be dead. <laughs> By mentioning that I, up to this moment, I've been I've been jamming consistently for almost ten years, and I've never killed a character before until last Friday. <laughs> but by the end of this retelling, one of the party will be dead. <laughs> Like, for real dead. And there is no raised dead in this setting. So they're dead, dead, dead. They're not coming back. Exciting. Yes. Anyone want to place bets on who? <laughs> I used Guardian's counter in the previous session, just in case that. <laughs> All right, keep going. Oh. All right. It could, it, yeah. So, yeah, it's not yeah, they they left off, and it was just it was the enemy's turn. So, um, uh, Hank. I think I remember. Um, how it all went. So the rent there was that one there was that one mongrel folk that was just attacking Crocus constantly and he yeah. was like really like <laughs> fight the man. That, is that, that minion? Yeah. Oh, yes. With a board and a nail in it. He just kept being like it's like <laughs> just saying things yeah. uh, I don't know, like Get off our land! And yeah. This is unjust! How dare you? <laughs> Etc. I just kept hitting Croesus with this board with a nail in it, and Croesus yeah. completely ignored it. Yeah. <laughs> I think, did Croesus try and hit him and, like, critically fail at one point or something? I don't know if he ever tried to hit that minion. He did uh, take out to some other minions, yeah. but that particular guy, and eventually he got this, like, damage reduction going, so that the guy was hurting him by, like, two damage a round, and he was just purposely ignoring him. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure that was when one, the, one, actually that Croesus took out the archer who had, yeah. who had been hammering Hank and killed the one, killed one archer. There were two. Archers. There were two, yeah. and the second one, I think, um, took Hank unconscious. Yeah, those archers were nasty because they had this thing where they could hit a guy, uh, and then they would be invisible to that guy until they next attacked, and so they were tag teaming back and forth. You know, like I hit you, I'm invisible, and then the other guy's like, I hit you. Now I'm invisible, <laughs> and they pop back and forth. It was nasty. Yeah, the interesting thing about those guys is I kind of made it. I kind of made a mistake. I I had intended them to be standards, but I forgot when you put a class template on a guy, it makes him an elite. So they were a little bit harder than I intended. <laughs> yeah. So Hank is soloing these two elites. They're probably 19th level. I don't know. Do they have more hit points? Did you actually give them more hit points? I, oh, I, I just I actually just took them out of the compendium, so I didn't. They did have more hit points because of that. So, but. Um, oops. Yes. <laughs> So, so and Hank gets bucket. Aurora, Aurora went over to help Hank yes. because she heard Hank's little thing that he does whenever he goes to zero. We've and, heard that a lot. And she used um, her last healing up, bringing him back up last round, I think. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, she didn't have any healing left. She just went over to help yeah, him. Like, right at the end of last session, she used her last healing to bring Hank up. Yeah. And he was, and he had done some damage, and now they were firing on him. Oh, he didn't. He didn't go down. He, didn't go down he got hit by the archers, but he right. didn't go down that round. Okay, but oh, I remember what was over there anyway. Uh, it, it was, but it was later in the round. So um, I don't think anything else actually happened at that point before <laughs> the Harrier Harrier yeah. um, did a strike. So so we've got these two big tents, and in between them we've got uh, Cricket and Nameless Elf on our side. Uh, Daenerys, Eryx, and Adaron, and there's these two swordsmen who are fighting us. Bad guys. Bad guys. Swordsmen. Swordsmen. Mongrel folk. Uh, and so we're all in this little narrow thing between these two tents, and the Harrier's coming down along like that, and a strafe... And, and, and it has this, this strafe attack that hits... It can hit two lines, and they're standing yeah. right in two it's lines. Two lines. <laughs> so they'd strafed us previous round, but they hadn't moved yet, so they were still like in midair coming around. So they open their round by doing another strafe attack. 
right off the bat, straight up. Yeah. Um, so fortunately, uh, they critically missed uh, Cricket and Daenerys. Was it or Daenerys? Daenerys. Uh, they missed. They, there were two people. They critically, were two critically missed. missed. They cri- no. They they critically missed. They critically missed three times. I'm sure they critically missed Cricket. They critically missed uh, Daenerys, and they critically missed Nameless Elf. Mm. Was rolling in that. Yeah. 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 Uh, they did hit Eric though. Uh, maybe one of those was just a regular miss. I thought. I think one was a regular. Yeah, miss. one was a regular miss, and two were critical misses. Yeah. Uh, but they did hit Eric, and I believe took her down to zero with that. Mm-hmm. I remember. She may have already been down. She was already down. Oh, okay, so they didn't hit her then. They, they didn't shoot her. I mean. I, well, uh, they did. I, I think they might have. No, they they, they shot, shot her. They and, shot her while she was lying below zero. Yeah. Nasty. <laughs> Uh, and they hit Adderon. Uh, did that take Adderon to zero? No. I don't think so. No, no, no. Adderon was and, still and Cricket and Cricket had actually Cricket had a bunch of hit points. Uh, she'd taken a healing potion and a second win uh, last uh, session, so she had 19 hit points. But she was prone on the ground. Um, Extra defense against Raven. Yeah, well, they yeah, critically, I took, I took critically that into missed, account, they critically but it never mattered. Me, so it didn't matter. Uh, Every, everyone who was prone. Yeah. Critically, oh no, Eric's got it. Anyway. So, all oh, right, it didn't take out. Adderon got down to I think like eight hit points. Ten hit points. Ten, ten, points. ten or fifteen yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. After being hit by the the, the Gatling, uh, and then it was going to do this 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 close in like swoop right past attack thing, uh, and I I went and I talked about how, oh, it's doing that between these two mm. tents. There's only like 10 feet of space between them. And it's about 15, 15 feet long feet wide. Span, so it's really hazardous if it gets tangled up. Is all. And John was like, yeah, that makes sense. It's not going to do a risky, risky move maneuver like that. And then Tim, who created uh, the Harriers in world building, said, but taking risks like that is what they do. <laughs> <laughs> It's their thing. <laughs> and and so John was like, alright, so if he does that, there'll be like, you know, he'll have to make these rolls to not hit the tents. If he hits the tents, he'll have to make these rolls to not immediately flip out and crash and burn it. Yeah, it basically had a fifty percent yeah. chance of getting away scot free and then like twenty five of it sucking a gunner falling off and twenty five of it being really awful getting all yeah. tangled up. And considering that we've been able to do diddly squat to this this carrier, uh, I sort of figured this might actually work in our favor. <laughs> if if the rolls work out poorly for him, you know, this will be awesome. So I sort of reluctantly was like, all right, all right, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Maybe this will work out for the best. Yeah, so before I did the attack, first I just saw if he gets off. It doesn't matter. The attack, oh, no, the attack was off first, but I rolled to see if he got out scot-free. Yeah. He got out scot-free. Yeah. No problem. He pulled in there, pulled in close, just right in the tent, didn't hit the tent, and then he, he had his engine backfire right onto the group of people, and then he shot way up in the air, because if you remember the whole time this guy's just yeah, yeah, yeah. And he flew day down, bam, shot up, yeah. flew way off, and just blasted them <laughs> with this massive attack. Exactly. And <laughs> dropped leaflets as he did so. Yeah, these the little, these little pieces red, of... Courtesy Captain Ultimate Fist Punch McGossie. Yeah. <laughs> as part of his attack. Yeah. The, the, the explosion. Leaflet bombing. Thing, so leaflet bomb. <laughs> um, and so he... He... So he rolled to hit everyone. Uh, I think everyone got hit. Everyone got hit. Uh, and, and then John rolled the damage. Yeah, it was 3d6 plus 12, and I rolled 663. <laughs> and so it did 20... Well, what would that be, 28? I think, it was, I, I think it was 27, so it must have been plus 11. Anyway, yeah. I believe it was around 27 damage or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Massive damage. Blue Cricket down to negative 8. Yeah. Uh, she was already prone, so she didn't have to fall over again. Sorry. <laughs> uh, killed Erix. Uh, killed. Did the nameless guy die? Killed the nameless the guy too. Nameless guy got blown, blown, blown below zero. Yeah, yeah these then, are these are NPCs. Oh, yeah. They get blown below zero. They generally just die. Yeah. Uh, with with the, the important NPCs like Eric, say I would give them a, a round to be healed, but two and, went and cricket right past. and cricket considers every person important. Okay. So she actually spent a um, uh, what, what is it the, the the healing thing the bards do the majestic, majestic word. word yeah. She spent a majestic word on Nameless Elf last, last round. <laughs> uh, 
um, a waste. <laughs> well, it turns out it was because he died. Yeah, yeah he just died in this attack. <laughs> so I'm a lot of majestic words and healing surges and everything is terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, and blows Adaron down to negative 18 hit points, which oh, no. is below negative bloody. <laughs> Adaron so. was standing at 10 hit points, but uh, his, uh, his negative bloody was 16. No, he was just one below. Yeah, so yeah, he was at level 2, right? Yeah. Level or 3. 3, actually. Level 3. Yeah. But, but Adaron's a controller. Like he's a controller. Yeah, he's still yeah. Under, yeah. Under, like 40, under 40 hit points. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he is under, so that I think took, 32 is... It took him one below his, his negative bloody. Oh. So, so I, I generally have a rule, even if you go below your negative bloody, you have one round yeah. to be saved, right? Because it was just heroic, a heroic, thing, heroic right? like, throw a potion in or whatever. <laughs> Everyone was unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> Aurora was more than a round away. Yeah, uh-huh. Aurora, she, Aurora she started had running. a heal, and she and ran, and ran full bore, and yeah. got to Adron right at the end of her turn. Yeah. And everyone had already spent their action points against the Grey Render. So she got to Adron and had no actions left. Yeah. She didn't have any healing potions or anything anyway. It would have to be a heal skill yeah. check, yeah. which is pretty dicey anyway. Actually, before, and before that happened, uh, that was when uh, Barkir showed yeah. up and like totally like froze. froze one. Oh, that's what happened after after the guy blasted the you guys. Mm-hmm. The swordsman, all, everyone there was dead or unconscious, so they ran and they took Hank down. They took him unconscious. Yeah. And then, th- but then one of the swordsmen was killed when Barkir came and just turned him to ice and destroyed him. And he comes here. Barkir's the, 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 the head of the expedition, the spellblade, and so. So he, he arrived, and he was just right on the edge of the map at that at, at that turn. Um, so he, he couldn't do anything that yeah. round. Aurora ran there. So basically, there was nothing we could do. Nothing. Aurora Aurora just ran up to uh, Adron's flaming corpse because it just it was a huge yeah. burning thing. And Adron's a tree, right? Yeah. So, so he's, he's just like just laying there fire, on yeah. fire, and yeah. she's, she's just shouting. Yeah. As, as the leaf as the leaf foot floats down, courtesy Captain Ultimate <laughs> Fist Punch McAwesome. Yeah. Uh, wow. So yeah. Afterwards, John was like, I think I overestimated how powerful, or underestimated how powerful the bad guy was, or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, he so, wasn't expecting us to lose that badly. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, Varkir shows up, and he's like, I have one healing potion. Who do I give it to? Yeah. Uh, yeah exactly and then John was, like, striving to find some way to, to even though it was past the one round of race. I figured uh, I'd give them a, a saving throw. You feed, you, if, and there was two you, that were about past dead. You could feed it to them, they get a saving throw, and if they save it... Yeah, Eryx, can, Eryx is, is, you know, past, uh, past dead, and Adron's past dead. Uh, and Aurora is the only conscious person there. Yeah, and, and Varkir's looking for her direction. And yeah, give so it to Varkir's him. like, Aurora, who do I give this to? Who should, who's, who's the best one to give it to? Because also his, his second in command, Duranius, he's not dead, but he's, he's, he's laying unconscious dying. Um, and Eric's is in the same boat as Adaron. And so, Aurora, in her infinite wisdom, picks Cricket. Now, now to be I hadn't spent any, even, even done any uh, strikes on death saves yet. Yeah. yeah. Now, to, to, to be fair, <laughs> it wasn't a guarantee that yeah. uh, Aurora or Adaron would, would survive from the potion. And plus, when we were talking about this, yeah. I still... As soon as as soon as it looked like Adaron was uh, yeah. as soon as it looked like Adaron was going to die, uh, Shannon, Adaron's player, was immediately like, "Huh, I guess I have to think of a new character." And she like pulls up the player's handbook, and then by the time I'm like, "Yeah, you can get like a fifty percent chance," she's like, oh, "But I'm kind of interested in this new character now." <laughs> So she said goodbye very quickly. Yeah. Okay. So that was that was actually part of the main reason. Yeah. That didn't try. Aurora didn't try too hard to save Adaron because Shannon was like, yeah, yeah. whatever. I, 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 and at that point, it was I'm pretty, an adventure. Was, I knew the risk. Yeah. And at that point, it was pretty obvious that it was just like John was was like bending already bent house rules. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so we we don't like taking advantage of that kind of thing if possible. So. Yeah. Although it, it, 
was pretty awesome because it, it, as it happened um, last Friday when we played was uh, Robin and our ten year wedding anniversary. Yeah, I saw, I saw and so that. and so Robin Robin was just flabbergasted when Shannon's character was killed. Yeah, and she was like, "What are you doing? This is the worst anniversary present ever. Killing my cousin on my anniversary." <laughs> the cricket. Yeah. And the cricket came up. And let's hope the cricket never learns <laughs> that she wasted a healing potion on a domestic mm. when there were people who were injured. Indeed. Because <laughs> she'll be very cross about that. That is awesome. Yeah. And that was actually more or less the end of the battle because the Harrier just did that last pass and then flew back over the chasm. Mm -hmm. And the Mongol folk were just sort of trying to scare people off, so they, they actually started fleeing. Everyone except for that crappy guy with the the board. board. <laughs> he kept on, but they, at that point, the elves sort of got rid of the last of the Mongol folk and everything sort of calmed down and whatnot. But... Uh, check to wake up Hank and the battle was more or less over at that point. <laughs> but Adiron was dead. So we had a, so a funeral Aurora thing. was devastated. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Actually, uh, Prosus completely flipped out initially. Oh, really? Prosus picked up Adiron's corpse and started walking towards the rift. Mm. And we're like, I don't know what he's doing, but it's probably not a good idea. Yeah. So we go and convince him not to do whatever it is he's doing. We well, he probably thought it was like Ferris or whatever. I don't know. Well, no, because he, well, everyone thought he was going to go throw Adoron in the rift, although I believe he said he was just going to make a funeral pyre or some sort of, you know, some sort of oblin No, thing. he told me that he was going to try climbing down the side of the rift. Oh. <laughs> and and oh, sen that's right, essentially the same as throwing Adoron Yeah, <laughs> that's right, because he, he was like, he was like, are you going to throw her, or throw him in the rift? He was like, no. I, that's, that's an awful thing to do. I was going to climb down the side of the rift with his body. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we stopped him from doing whatever it is he was going to do. Some crazy Oblin thing. Yeah. Some crazy Krosis thing. Well, it might be an Oblin thing. I don't know. <laughs> pretty out there. Krosis did really old well, one. Well, Aurora's the oldest. Oh, okay. Krosis is pretty old, though. Krosis, yeah. Krosis is the Oblin who's not broken. Yeah, yes, who is broken, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I described him to uh, uh, Mark here. Mm. Like, yeah, he's, he's kind of broken. <laughs> um, so I broke up my sad dirge music. Yep. Everyone was on the Adron. And yep. And then he started talking about how, oh, this is an interesting idea. Maybe I could have the party get killed off one by one. <laughs> Well, and I was like, now you've tasted eight, blood. Yeah. <laughs> eight, eight people were thrown down the chasm, and now four of them are dead, and they've died off one by one by one. Yeah. Three of well, them were NPCs, but... The first three died very quickly. I wouldn't exactly call that one by one. True. But anyway... So it was all part of my evil Warforged plan. Or, so, well, practical. So what else happened in the aftermath? Uh, we, we told Mark here about the, the, um, the Cortex. He decided he was trustworthy. Yeah, he he had taken their... I think I actually mentioned that last time, because that was... That, Aurora told him about the Cortex before the battle. Oh, but you're talking about when the... Yeah, yeah we, we, sure, we certainly actually had it. Mm, we right, we right, mentioned, right. We'd mentioned that we found one. Right. And then left her the implication that it was still down there. Oh, because Barker was super pissed, because, like, yeah. he, a bunch of people got killed. Actually, a lot of the mongrels had done long lethal damage, but not all of them. And, of course, the Harrier hadn't done long lethal damage. So he'd lost a bunch of people. So he's pissed that people had died. He's also pissed off because they lost... They'd lost so badly that they couldn't stay there 
safely, and so they had to return home and get more reinforcements. And he was just on the cusp of like going to this awesome ruins, and he was just he was really in a bad like he was just hopping around and just and a, he was in a bad. Mood. So we showed him the cortex and told him we'd sell it to him, mm. which cheered him up significantly. Yeah, <laughs> he was super excited about that. Yeah. He's right. You guys would sell that. We have no use for it. Mm. Yeah, the party's kind of weird that way. Like they have, they don't know what to use it for. It also kind of reminds me about their interesting reaction to um, the the leaflet from Captain and Ultimate Fish Punch <laughs> Gotham. They just, they just like left it there. They didn't care. They're like, yeah, if we ever see him, we'll probably fight him. But whatever. Yeah, we're we're not gonna swear vengeance and hunt him to the ends of the earth. <laughs> We're, we're going to be like, oh, if there's like a Harrier convention in town, we'll ask if Cap is Ultimate Fist Punch McGossum's there. And if he is, we'll go and, and beat the crap out of him. But, yeah, other than that. Yeah. Weird. That's so weird. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, what's wrong with you? It yeah, wasn't no one anything was, personal. Yeah, no one, no one's <laughs> super bloodthirsty and vengeful. Mm. They, they just had a sort of a solemn service for Adron. They, they, they built a pyre out of dead wood and burnt him, which is, I guess, the, um, uh, the dryad, dryad way. And now uh, Ad- or Aurora had promised that if Adron ever died, she would take his ashes back and bury them under his tree. So we have a quest now. Yeah, so the party actually has a quest, because before they were like, I don't know where we're going to go now. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it all worked out. Adron died to give us direction. <laughs> <clears throat> So, the um, um, expedition pulls up to camp. Mm-hmm. Next day they leave. They're going back to uh, Valneva, which, which is where we were going anyway. Yeah, and that actually completely derailed my plans because yeah. I expected, you know, they to repel the Mongol folk and whatnot, and then, you know, they hit off to Valneva on their own. But they lost so badly that the expedition had to go back, and so now they're traveling back with an expedition, which really changes things yep. a lot. Yeah, huge amount. Along the way, at one point, the expedition stops. Um, out on the road ahead of us, there's these four dragonborn. And they, and so the expedition leader of Varkir, he goes up to talk to the dragonborn. And we, being PCs, assume this is, of course, our business. Uh, and so we go up there. To um, interfere, I suppose. To help facilitate. Always do what you're best at. We were there to interfere. Yes. Damn nosy adventurers. Yes. So we get up there, and I'm trying to remember. He was uh, there was this one dragon board that was talking. Was he talking with Varkir? He, he just finished. Varkir was just responding to him, saying, "No, I I don't know what you're talking about." Yeah. And when Aurora came up. The dragonborn, in sort of in broken Nelvish, asks, um, asks Aurora, "Have you seen the cloud children that have fallen from the sky?" <laughs> to which she replied, "Well, I fell from the sky, but I don't think I'm a cloud child." <laughs> and to which he said, "Do you have the power?" At which point she was just, just kind of confused by this, yeah. and so, I, so she decides to offer him some food. At which point he says, "You have defend- you have offended Tarak." And draws his sword and immediately attacks her. And so, of course, all of us are like Aurora's under attack. We all counterattack. Yeah. And with every one of us that launches an attack against this guy, he's just more and more like like aghast at this horrendous offense to Tarek. Yeah, absolutely horrified. And eventually, the other, the other three Dragonborn draw their Dragonborn draw their weapons and are just just staring at you like, how could people do such a thing? Like, ugh. You're completely perverse. Yeah. Um, Disgusted by their actions. Yeah. At which point, in John's original plan, we have a big fight with these guys, and it's a hard fight, and something happens to do. do. What actually happens in this scenario is about 80, 
open guards <laughs> draw their bows and get their arrows ready and all point at the tar rack. Yeah, I bark your orders. Yeah. You know, stand down or I order my archers to shoot. And so they're like... They look at him like he's just absolutely horrified at yeah. his behavior. But they also realize that, well, <laughs> there's not much we can do against 80 archers with whatever. Mm-hmm. And so they say, okay, okay, we won't fight you, but let it be known. Yeah, you're all, yeah, you're all condemned to death under Tarek, except Aurora. Mm. And that next time we encounter you without 80 archers behind you, we're going to kill you. Yeah, and they specifically pointed out to each person, which was basically the entire party plus Mark here. And but you're under a sentence of death. You're under a sentence of death. You're under a sentence of death. And to Aurora. I, we're gonna we're gonna let you be out of your sentence of death if you agree to learn the ways of Tarak. Because she had expressed interest in learning the ways of Tarak, which quite oh. perked up this guy earlier. And then he said, "All right, if you want to learn the ta- ways of Tarak, come with us." And she said, "Well, I don't really want to come with you right now." And he just walked. Up. <laughs> and they just they left. Like, so apparently we're under sentence of death if we ever go to the salt skag. <laughs> well, we don't know. Actually, that's not even actually accurate. So. <laughs> yeah, it's only, it's, the salt skag is not all correct. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be real easy to tell. <laughs> <laughs> When we got there, I'd be like, oh yeah, this is a Tarek town. Mm. It, it very much, um, it did reinforce the uh, the in-world sense that Tarek is just this arbitrary thing that Dragonborn talked about and no one understands it. Yeah. It, just, it seems to mostly involve them attacking you for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> so Tim knows what's going on and you know what's going on. Yeah, yeah Tim was like busting a gut the whole time. He was like freaking out as, uh, yeah. as, you, as everyone was interacting with the dragon. Born and things just got worse and worse. Yeah. Why is he, he made the Tarak. He, 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 he knows what they He knows what Tarak is really all about, but no one else does. It's just like Dragonborn always are going on about Tarak, and then they usually kill you. <laughs> oh, I'm really interested in finding out the secret of the Tarak. Uh, you have to find it out at the appropriate. I that was a good idea. Have to wait. <laughs> I like keeping it in suspense because it really yeah, yeah. it really did come off as like their behavior was just random and violent. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Well, I figure probably it was some sort of formal duel that they were proposing. I don't know why. Um, and so the fact that we were interfering with a formal duel was what was really offensive. Mm. But um, <laughs> but really, cricket doesn't care. <laughs> Uh, and so that was where the adventure ended. It was a little bit early um, because we had short circuited things by bringing along a squad of archers. That, mm. And I wasn't, I was like, well, I've got some encounters planned for, on the road that'll like kill some time while I have time to prep the city of Valneva. But then they're like, yeah, we just have this contingent of archers behind us all the way. Oh, I guess I, that's not, <laughs> that's not going to draw any time up. Yeah. They, they basically to go out to Belneva and I had to end about half an hour early. <laughs> And Valneva is a good place to encounter a new party member. Mm-hmm. So that's good too. Mm-hmm. This. That's where you end. Yep. Yeah. Gonna need another Adderon. Dear Diary, today my friend Adderon has passed on. And he won't reawaken under. Oh, right. Adderon won't reawaken. He's gone. Gone forever, apparently. But we've discussed what to do before. He he clearly told me that if he died, we should build a pyre and burn his body, and then I'd collect the ashes and put them in something and then take them to a peaceful place, a forest, and bury them. I think I'd like to just carry him around for a little bit before I bury him. You know, it's only been a few months since we've met, since I woke up, and yet I feel so close to him. He was such a good friend, and it was obvious that even though he bossed me around sometimes, he really cared about me. He tried to take care of me. 
Oh, Adiron, I will miss you. I was looking forward to, hopefully someday, being back up with my brothers and watching you. But I guess that won't happen. Perhaps some good will come out of this. Somehow, I'm determined, somehow, some good will come out of this. We won't let your death be in vain, my friend. My friend. Well, didn't expect this to happen. Uh, Adiron's dead now. Hmm. It's not fair. Damn it, it's not fair! Why? Those mongrels are... Oh. Why does this have to happen? So many people died. Adron died. Eric's died. Uh, all these other people who... Oh, it's such a massacre, and... It happened again. One of our party has passed, and it wasn't me. In the temple, one of the things that we are trained is not to get attached. It is the life of a domestic to to pass from owner to owner sometimes. That happens. One shouldn't get attached. But it's hard sometimes. And and especially now, so soon after losing my previous family, the first family that I I I had had, uh, to see this this new this new family being whittled down one by one, and I try so hard, but I wasn't able to stop it. I I failed. I failed, and I will I will strive all the harder for for those who are left to protect them. I will I will do my very best, and and hopefully, if if someone has to die. I will be able to make sure that it is not a person, that it's someone expendable. I will, I will do what I can, and hopefully, I won't lose a second, uh, a second family. Okay. <coughs> uh, I'm, 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 I'm gonna add her on. <coughs> I've, I've, I've written your, your name down where I'll remember it. I was going to take take you back. I was going to take you back to to start the dream over again. Cause, cause when 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 the when the, when the dreams when the dreams over, well, I'm going to get everybody back. We're all going to go home. But. But but Aurora, she 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 says that I, I I can't do that 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 I can't take you back to the wound because she made a promise about about taking you back to where you came from herself. And I've got to let her keep that promise. I've got to I've got to go forward. I can't go back yet. I can't go back. I can't go. Back. I'm gonna miss you. I miss, I miss all of you. <laughs>